Hello, I'm Chris Mack, and this is Lecture 16 of our course, From Data to Decisions. In this lecture, I'll talk about a reasonably popular test for normality called the Shapiro-Wilk test. Recall that one of the assumptions that we make in our ordinary least squares regression, and assumptions we make for a variety of statistical tests, is that the distribution of the data is normal. So often we want to do some checking to see if we think that's a reasonable assumption to be making. The Shapiro-Wilk test is one of the more popular tests for doing so. It uses a null hypothesis that the sample comes from a normal distribution. It calculates this test statistic called W. Uh, the, the denominator in this is simply the sum of the square errors. Uh, the sum of the square differences of the data from its mean. And the, the numerator, though, is, is a little bit strange because it has these uh, constants. So we have these constants, AI, the Shapiro-Wilk constants, that are multiplying the data. And then uh, we're, we're summing up all of those things and squaring them. And that makes up the numerator. To get these Shapiro-Wilk constants, we first um, sort or order all of our data from the smallest to the largest. So when I say you know, A1, that's the constant I use to multiply the smallest value of x, and then A2 is the constant I use to multiply the second smallest value of x, etc. Uh, we calculate this statistic, and then we also have a set of critical values of this statistic for a given alpha, a given significance level, and we reject the null hypothesis that the distribution is normal, Never w is less than this critical value. Alternatively, we calculate the p-value for this particular value of double w. What's the probability that we get a value of w this low, given the assumption of a normal distribution? Then we compare that p-value to alpha, and if it's less than alpha, we again reject the null hypothesis. And the reference below shows us the paper where uh, this statistic and test was worked out. What about these constants, these Shapiro-Wilk constants? Well, the calculation of them is a little bit involved. So what most people do is they, they let somebody else do the calculations for them, uh, and we have these tables of coefficients. Uh, the constant is different for every different sample size. So if I have, uh, I don't know, really know why we have two here uh, in this table, because this Shapiro-Wilk test only works if you have three or more data points. Um, if you have, uh, uh, say, nine data points, um, then you would calculate A1, A2, A3, and A4 uh, here. The, these are symmetric, so in fact, the, it then repeats, and A5, A6, A7, and A8 are um, the same numbers in reverse. So A1 would equal A9. Uh, in this case. Um, but uh, we're not going to really get into uh, uh, grabbing these values and using them in our calculations, uh, as I'll explain in a minute. We also have tables that show us these critical values uh, of that statistic W. But the reality is we never do these calculations by hand. We always let some software package generate our uh, our statistic and our p-values for us. Uh, we're going to use in this class R. Uh, the Excel doesn't have a Shapiro-Wilk test built into it. So in R, we'll assign a set of data some vector x. We don't have to sort them in any way. Software does that for us. So we just have the, the data set up in a vector. We run one command, Shapiro.test of x. And it will calculate for us statistic W and the p-value. Then we compare the p-value to our sig significance level alpha, and we reject the null hypothesis that the distribution is normal if the p-value is less than alpha, our significance level. For example, alpha might be 0.01 or 5. A few properties of this test. Um, w is kind of like a correlation coefficient. 
it's always between zero and one. And the closer it is to one, uh, the more likely it is that you will have a, a normal distribution. So uh, it's kind of like doing a probability plot and calculating the correlation coefficient from that probability plot. And the closer it is to one, the more confident you are that the data really is normally distributed. We can only use this for three or more data points. Uh, w is independent of location and scale in our data. If we add a constant to the data, it doesn't change. W, if we multiply the data by some constant, it doesn't change. Uh, of course, we would hope that that would be true. And the Shapiro-Wilk test has been shown to have the best power uh, at a given significance level compared to uh, all the other popular tests. So more likely to reject null hypothesis if, in fact, null hypothesis is not true um, for a given significance level and a given size of the data set. However, the problem with this test, and in fact, almost every test that we might use uh, for uh, performing a uh, test of normality is that it is sample size biased. Um, how you interpret the results very much depends on the sample size. And we'll get into that in the next slide. As a result, we almost always combine a Shapiro Wilk test with a normal probability plot to help us interpret results. What do I mean by sample size biased? Well, let's think about how we interpret the results of a statistical test such as this. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, what have we said? Well, we've said we've simply not rejected the null hypothesis. That does not mean we've proven. We haven't accepted the idea that our distribution is normal. Often we're going to use this because we're doing some other statistical test or we're doing an ordinary least squares regression where we are assuming a normal distribution. And we'd like to know, is this assumption reasonable? Failure to reject this uh, null hypothesis doesn't mean we're out of the water. It doesn't mean we're safe. It doesn't mean we've proven that the distribution is normal. Remember, with the hypothesis test, the null hypothesis is the default. And we're looking for evidence in the data that says this, this default is wrong. Um, if we do not reject, it means the data doesn't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Often, if we have a very small sample set, it means we don't have enough information in the data to reject this null hypothesis. But that usually means with small samples that we don't have enough information to conclude hardly anything from that data set. And so the fact that we don't reject the null hypothesis doesn't really mean a whole lot. So small sample sizes make it very, very difficult to reject the null hypothesis of a normal distribution. On the other hand, if we have a very large data set, then we are quite likely to reject the null hypothesis if we have even a very small departure from normality. The larger the data set is, the more confident we are in, in making a rejection claim um, uh, that we have lots of information in our data. But it doesn't tell us anything about how much distribution differs from a normal. You have just a very slightly heavier or lighter tails, a very slight amount of skew in the data. Um, we'll get a reject. But does that mean that OLS is not good anymore um, because it's it's making an, an, an assumption of, of normal distribution? Well, maybe not. If the amount of Deviation from the normal distribution is quite small. Our assumption of a normal distribution might be. Uh, so bottom line is it's kind of difficult to interpret the output of one of these tests, especially if it's borderline, if it's close uh, to uh, our, our p-value close to our significance level. And even p-values that are quite a bit different from our, our significance level uh, it can still be hard to interpret the test because of this sample size bias. All right, learned in this a short lecture on the Shapiro-Wilk test. First, why do people like 
Shapiro-Wilk test for normality. You should be able to run the Shapiro-Wilk test in R. It's a simple one line command. And of course, interpret the results of that test is given to you in R. But given that you've run the Shapiro-Wilk test, what are the difficulties, excuse me, what are the difficulties in interpreting the results from this test? Or in fact, any hypothesis test for normality. That's this lecture. Next time we're going to start talking about outliers. Till then.